All right, guys, welcome back to the podcaster's journey. My name is Caleb, and I'm your guide to help you create a podcast that cuts through the noise. This whole podcast is started from the ground up so that as an open diary and journal so that you can learn from me, learn all, excuse me, learn all the tips and tricks that are going to help you avoid things and just help you make a better podcast that reaches the people that you want to talk to and helps you build that audience. So this is episode six. And this is going to be kind of a rambling intro, but man, I just want to say thank you for being here. After doing six, well, five of these episodes and now starting on the sixth, it's just a lot of work. And I'm super glad that I'm doing this and learning this business from the inside out rather than just being involved on the back end with editing and and publishing or producing the podcast on the back end. It it has been really eye-opening for me to be on this side of the camera and this side of the microphone. It is a lot of work to go through all the content creation and building your script and figuring out what you're going to talk about to sit down in front of the camera and and make sure that that it all looks good on video and that it's sounding good and that we're monitoring and it sounds good with the audio to make sure then that your edio uh, that your editing passes through what you tried to capture and record and then making sure that after all that you've got everything repurposed well and it's published to all the various channels man it is a lot of work And in episode one, I set out and promised you guys 100 episodes. And I'm not backing down from that in any means, but I just respect the amount of work that I signed up for a lot more now. And part of that is going to be getting the right tools in place and getting the right workflows in place to make this sustainable. Because guys, let's face it, most of us are not, podcasting is not our full-time job. Uh, Just being able to sit down in front of the camera and the microphone and do that is not our full-time job. And so it's got to be, we've got to create this in a way that is streamlined and that makes sense for our lives. Even if you're with a brand and you're in the marketing department and they've, they're telling you to start a podcast, that's still not the only thing on your plate. You've got other things to deal with in your marketing um, besides just the podcast. So figuring out ways to make this simple is, is of paramount importance. Um, And, and all that to say when you sit down and you try to streamline that, there's so many things that you can get lost in just from the equipment and tools side of things. So let's kind of dive into that today. That's what we're gonna be talking about in today's episode is the tools that I use to help me efficiently produce these episodes. And um, yeah, so it can be daunting to figure out what to use. I know um, when I came into the, the world of audio and trying to capture audio. I came in about 2009, 2010. I was uh, fresh into college, my f- freshman or sophomore year, and I wanted to, I'd been songwriting for a while, and I wanted to capture my music. And so I went down to Guitar Center and was looking around at all the different audio interfaces, at all the different microphones, and I didn't know what I needed to get. And I was so overwhelmed by all the options there were to pick up. And uh, so I just want to say, I, I see you and I understand the pain that you may be going through if you're trying to figure out your gear, but have no fear. We don't have to um, break the bank and we don't have to be confused. We're going to demystify a lot of that, uh, the editing software, uh, hosting softwares and platforms, that sort of things, the different things that we can look out for. So let's dive in. I've been there. I know what you're feeling. Let's get started. And the truth is, it's we can start with something very budget friendly and upgrade as we go. So let's talk about the microphone first and foremost. The microphone that I am using is the Zoom ZD1, ZDM1, and it's like a fifty dollar microphone, so it's definitely very budget friendly. Um, the reason I got this one is because a friend had bought into Zoom's whole mobile recording package, and he had four of these, and I was I was borrowing a couple of them probably every other week or every every week for clients that were coming over to record podcasts here in my studio when I was just getting started at, started with actually editing and helping people with their podcasts a couple of years ago. And uh, he was, my friend was getting good quality out of it. I was enjoying the quality I was getting out of these mics. And um, I just decided that I, you know, and he was generous to let me use these for probably a couple months or maybe three or four and it got to the point where I was like, Caleb, you can't keep asking him to borrow his gear. You've got to just pony up and get some mics. And so I ordered two of these. They've been fantastic. I've been super happy with them. 
They're not the holy grail of podcasting by any means, but they get the job done. And if you know how to use your tools appropriately, you're going to get a good sound out of them. So you could go for something like the Shure SM7B and get a great sound out of that. Or you could go with something like this. So what I would recommend, though, right now is if you're just starting, find a budget-friendly option that works for you that has good reviews. I would highly recommend the Zoom microphone. Um, but there's others from Rode. Uh, sure even has like a $50 mic that has um, a USB plug-in. So you don't even have to worry about the audio interface side of things. You can It's got the audio interface built right into the microphone. So there's tons of options for budget-friendly mics. If you need help finding a specific microphone for your um, use case, or you just want to run it by somebody and get a second opinion with somebody, hit me up. My contact details are down in the show notes. Shoot me a message on Instagram, an email. Hit me up on the website in the contact form. I would be more than happy to just give you some free advice on, hey, that microphone will work good, or eh, maybe let's keep looking for something for you. Basically, what you're going to want as you're looking for a microphone is a dynamic microphone that has a cardioid pattern. That's going to kind of be your best bet when it comes to microphones. Um, so yeah, hit me up if you need more help with that. But let's start with that for microphones. For headphones, it's super important that you have headphones, guys, as you're recording. Because uh, as an audio engineer, some people will just say, oh, we'll fix it in post. But the reality of it is, is if we're not getting good signal from the beginning into our ears, into the microphone, then it's, you know, it's going to limit what we're able to do on the back end. Plus, it's going to save you time if you're the editor and you're doing the editing on the back end. It's going to save you time to have good signal going in and have a good quality recording being captured. So get your headphones on so that you can monitor it. I use a pair of me in-ears, um, M-E-E in-ear headphones. Just so, and if you're watching it, I just turn my ear. Um, if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching in audio, I just turn my head so that they could see an example of that. I do that just so it's a little more low profile and you're not noticing it as much in the video recording. But I've also got a pair of um, Audio Technica ATH M20X headphones. These are great headphones. I have another business of teaching piano lessons, um, piano classes. And I've got almost every piano has a pair of these headphones. They're great. Um, one of the previous podcasts who is here using the studio every week, every couple times a week when he would come in and record, he would use these. They've got some good coverage around your ears and kind of capture um, or maybe cup your ears would be a better way to say that um, to kind of block out. They're not noise canceling, but they definitely block out some other noise so that you get a better sound. Um, coming through and just less distractions. So what are you looking for when you're um, listening on headphones? Well, you're listening for any audio glitches or any um, uh, gain staging problems. And by gain staging, I mean just clipping. So we're looking for clipping and glitches more or less while we're monitoring. Another thing we can look for is if you're doing more than one microphone with maybe two or three guests, you can have your headphones on to know, hey, we're kind of all at the same level already. Or Maybe Timmy's too loud over there, so let's turn him down a little bit. So it, it just helps get everybody kind of streamlined and on the same page before it ever, ever even hits the editing process. So get yourself a good set of headphones. Don't have to break the bank. If you've got iPhone ear pods, uh, the basic ones that used to come with the, with the iPhone, with the cord, that'll work just fine. Just get something so that you can kind of be listening these headphones that I mentioned earlier, these are about 50 bucks. You can pick them up used on Amazon for, I think, around 50 bucks, 45, 50 bucks. So we're up to like $100 if you're needing to buy something right now. Um, all right, let's move on to recording software and how we're capturing this. Uh, the recording software that I use, I used to use Logic Pro for recording the audio for podcasts, and I still do for some clients that come in. It just depends on the situation for this podcast to try to streamline things and make the video and audio sync better. I recently downloaded the Final Cut Pro camera app on the on my iPhone 15. And this is only, I don't know what other iPhone models have the USB-C port on it, to be honest with you. I upgraded from iPhone 11, so it was a pretty big upgrade for me. 
And uh, so with the USB-C though, what I'm saying is I'm able to plug this microphone into my audio interface and directly into my phone so that the audio and the video are all captured all together. And that program, if you have an iPhone that can do that, that program is completely free. Another one that I haven't explored but I've downloaded and started tinkering with is the Blackmagic camera. Um, they're the ones who are behind uh, some pretty heavy hitting uh, video software such as the DaVinci Resolve. Um, and they're just kind of an industry standard really in the, in the video world. So that app, uh, I played with it a little bit. It has even more capability and flexibility than the Final Cut Pro camera. I haven't used it yet just because I've already built a workflow for the for this and maybe I'll I'll get there someday when I want to just, you know, kind of experiment, but for what I'm capturing right now, I'm happy with what Final Cut Pro camera can do. If you're really into the video side and want to nerd out, this can capture um Apple Log and Apple ProRes it takes up a lot more space, but you can have a lot cleaner and crisper and just a, a more professional even picture. So you can do a lot if you've just got the iPhone. I would assume Android, I, I don't know. I'm an Apple guy, I will admit that. I would assume that, I believe Android has the USB-C port, a lot of those do nowadays. So I would assume Blackmagic, uh, Blackmagic's camera app would be available in the Google Play Store and you'd be able to check that out. Don't quote me on it, but that is one option if you're looking for free recording software for video and audio. Now, let's say you're just wanting to record just audio and you're not worried about capturing the video and the whole setup I've just explained doesn't work for you. So another option that you could do if you're in the Apple ecosystem, you could use GarageBand. It's a fantastic program. It's free, but it is, it's a, it, you can get more than more than you need out of that program for capturing and even excuse me even editing your podcast as you're going so don't be afraid to check that out even though it's not like an industry standard or anything like that don't worry about it you can get amazing things out of GarageBand and if you're on the PC side I haven't used it a lot myself but I've used it a few times Audacity I believe you can record in that I know you can edit there I would assume that you can record but somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I've not actually used it for recording. So so that's that's what I'm using. I'm primarily using just my phone and recording everything there directly and then and then moving into the editing phase from there. So let's talk about the editing phase and the editing tools that I use. My workflow goes like this. I capture it here on my iPhone and then I transfer that directly onto my Mac. And from there, I'm using Final Cut Pro and I've got a template for my uh, Final Cut Pro project. I've got a template that I just continue to copy and each new episode gets its own uh, library for that episode. And those all get, if you're interested in learning more about how this all works, hit me up. I'm thinking about doing an episode in the future for workflow, because I think that is huge, because really that is one way you're gonna be able to show up consistently is not only having the tools set in place, but having the workflow and the, and just the work set in place that you can do regularly and easily. So I start in Final Cut Pro and edit video first, make sure all my cuts are exactly how I want it, um, add the music, add uh, transitions, add my logo, that sort of stuff, add all that in first, and then I export it as an XML file over to Logic Pro. And in Logic Pro is where I do all my audio edits and make the audio sound good. And then from there, I export it back with an XML file back to Final Cut Pro and add that new audio file that I've edited back in under the video and export it. So for audios, um, audio editing, we're using Logic Pro and then we're also using Final Cut for the video. Now, again, you could use GarageBand for your, for your audio and for video, you may be able to use iMovie if you're on Apple but it's not gonna be as user-friendly or as plug and play as what I just shared with you. Now, granted, what I just shared with you is gonna take quite a learning curve to get to that as well, but these are options, okay? And this is where you get to shape your raw content into something that is gonna really kind of shine and pop. But again, like I said earlier in the edit, in the before we talk, started talking about microphones, you've gotta capture something good first. You can polish things, but the saying is, if you polish a turd, it's still a turd. So, so make sure you're capturing something that's that's worth capturing in the first place. 
Um, I do want to talk briefly about um, plugins. Um, in Logic Pro, I'm using quite a lot of plugins. If you're wanting to use plugins and get um, your audio sounding really great, what I would, and you're not in the audio engineering world yet, what I would recommend is that you look up compression and EQ and figure out because those two tools alone are going to drive ma majority of the radio sound or the professional podcasting sound that you're seeking to make. Okay, get on YouTube and look up how to EQ a podcast. Get on YouTube and look up how to do serial compression for podcasting. Um, it, a guy that I would recommend checking out his video and his plugin chain is actually, uh, I use an, an, adapt an adaptation of his plugin chain is uh, called Clean Cut Audio. He's got a great video um, titled, I, th I think it's just titled My Podcast Chain or something like that. I went through and I, I had a lot of the plugins that he um, was using or, or different variants of the plugins he was using from different companies. And I just plugged that into my chain and tweaked it for my podcast. And I've been using it for a client's podcast. I've been using it for my podcast. It's a great chain. It is pretty lengthy and a lot more than some, than, you know, what some people would say is necessary, but I think it gets a good sound and it definitely got a great sound for him and the products that he's putting out. And he's doing amazing stuff with podcasting and as an audio engineer for podcasters. So I highly recommend it. Go check it out. Um, all that to say though, don't get caught up in going and buying plugins to make your podcast sound better. First and foremost, if you're the editor, you need to just learn how to work with compression and work with EQ first before you ever start adding any more plugins. If, you, if you're not getting a sound that you really like just from knowing those tools, you're gonna struggle to, to, to get a good sound even having spent a lot of money on, on good plugins. So first and foremost, learn how to clean up your audio, um, learn how to capture your audio in a quiet room that won't need a lot of cleaning up, and then learn how to edit it with EQ and compression. Okay, I think I've said EQ and compression and referred back to that enough. So I'll leave you guys rest with that. But just remember, fix it in pre, not in post. That's my audio engineering advice for you today. Anyway, all right, moving on to distrib distribution and publishing tools. So just like trying to figure out the equipment that you're going to use, um, maybe the hardware like your microphone or audio interface, there's so many options out there and you can get analysis paralysis just by trying to figure out which one that you need and which uh, option that you need. Um, don't, let, don't let that stop you. Don't get stuck in the mud there. Find one that works for you and just go. You're not stuck there. You can transfer your show later. But think about things like, do you want to spend money on your podcast? Um, does this podcasting host give you space to grow as you get more downloads or more listeners? Might not be something super important to consider right at the beginning because we're still trying to, you know, get our bearings and find our audience. Uh, do you need analytics? Are you going to be really focused in on those? Uh, ask yourselves these kinds of questions and then find a platform that matches up well with that. Um, I have used, um, for hosting platforms, I have used, it used to be anchor.fm, which is through Spotify, Spotify podcasters is what they are now. Um, or, or podcast, Spotify for podcasters, I think. Uh, or I, I can't get, I always forget and get it mixed up. So if that's incorrect or backwards, forgive me. But I still use that for one of my podcast clients. He's been happy with it. The big perk for um, Spotify for podcasters is that uh, if you have a video podcast like this and you upload it directly to there, it's going to send to Spotify as a video podcast. So if you're interested in having people actually watching your podcast on other platforms besides YouTube, then that would be a great option for you. It is a free option, so it's gonna it's gonna be really nice on the wallet that way. The downside is is that the analytics aren't as um, in depth as something like Simplecast or something that you're gonna get with another podcasting hosting service. But uh, in the beginning, 
we're not as concerned with our with our analytics, what we're concerned about. I think w- with the metrics that we are concerned about, um, learning, you know, w- what our audience is, male versus female, uh, age range, and kind of listener count, those don't matter so much as to the success of our podcast, but they do help us paint a picture of if we're reaching who we're trying to reach when we set out with our ideal listener uh, profile. So I think I think all that to say, I think that Spotify for podcasters gives you enough with your metrics that that you're you're able to get up and get running for no cost and uh, getting your podcast sent out to everywhere. You can get it to Apple Podcasts. You can get it to um, iHeartRadio, uh, Amazon. Trying to remember all the platforms. I've I've set it up for a couple different clients going through there, but you can get it to all the main distributors or directories that you want your podcast to be hosted on. And I have really nothing bad to say about that option. It's been it's been a good option for the for I've worked with it for three clients. I've worked on that. Uh, for two other clients, we've used Simplecast. Again, a great, great service, great product. It is about $15 a month, if I remember correctly. Um, you're going to get a little more in-depth analytics and be able to see a little more in-depth there. But you're not going to have, if video is important to you, as I understand it, last time I used it, video doesn't get delivered um, to even YouTube from from there. You're going to have to upload your video to YouTube. And it doesn't go to, there's the only way to get video on Spotify is to go through what was formerly known as Anchor. So if video is important to you, that's good to know. Keep that in mind. Um, One of my clients wanted to move away from Anchor because they wanted to have deeper analytics. But I reminded him and I said, hey, it's okay to move. And that's great if you want to. But we got to remember that if video is still a priority for you to get delivered to Spotify, we have to stay here. We, We can't move. And if you know any different information and you know another uh, distributor that is gonna that, that delivers video, please email me. I would love to learn about it. I would love to be in the know and be kept up on that. Um, that's just the knowledge I have and the experience that I have. Excuse me right now. So um, the platform I am using for this podcast is called Hubhopper. So Hubhopper is, I wouldn't say it's like a very new site, but it's not, it's not, it's, it's one that I just recently came upon. And to be honest with you guys, the reason I joined up with them is because I was able to get a lifetime deal with their service. Um, It's too soon to say how I really feel about it, but so far the user interface has been great. I've loved the education there and the support they provide for people starting out with podcasts. They're a great resource for that sort of stuff. The founder has a YouTube um, like 21 day challenge that you can watch a video every day to be working on your podcast and building it up. So if you're looking for another resource to help you along in your podcast journey, it would not be a bad idea to check out Hubhopper and check out the resources they have there. That being said, if you do... um, want a little cheaper option for hosting, but you don't want to go with Anchor and you don't want to go with those, I do have capability to onboard some different podcast teams. I don't have a lot of space, um, so I won't be able to help everybody who comes my way, but I did purchase some, uh, some extra space to be able to help clients in the future. So if you're looking for a place that has fairly deep analytics from what I understand on their website, Again, I haven't been able to dive in yet, but if you want to explore it with me, or maybe maybe this is a year down the road from publishing and you want to hear my um, two cents on Hubhopper, then please re- shoot me an email and I'd be happy to have a conversation with you about um, Hubhopper and how what the experience has been like for me and if it would be a good fit for you. Last thing after we get the podcast published on hosting platforms is scheduling all of the other content that we have. And honestly, I am too fresh in this journey to have real tools that are beneficial to you yet here in this space, but I have created a workflow so that I'm checking everything off. Most, um, if not all social media platforms now have a scheduling feature. I know it's annoying to go and go to each, go to YouTube, go to Facebook, go to LinkedIn, go to Twitter, um, go to Instagram. I'm not on TikTok, 
But to go to all these individual places and schedule your stuff, it's a lot of work and I get it. But if you're on a budget, that's what we got to do. And that's what I'm doing right now. I am looking for ways to automate this and looking for ways to streamline it. But right now it's not in the budget and I've got to just pony up and just make it happen each week. So I've got a, I am developing a Google sheet that has all this stuff listed out with all, you know, just making it really simple and easy for me to click a link in the cell that takes me directly to that social media site. Um, I can upload everything there, close that, go back to my Google sheet, check it off that I'm done, move to the next one. So right now it's not too painful. It is streamlined, but I am looking for ways to streamline it either with a service or continuing to streamline my uh, Google sheet. I'm looking at um, different ways to implement uh, ChatGPT into it with an API and that sort of stuff, a key. Um, but anyway, that's a whole nother rabbit trail. So let's talk about some optional tools to consider to finish off. And that would be email marketing and community engagement tools. Um, like I said, with the automation, I'm fairly new to the email marketing portion. I do have an account with brevo.com, which was formerly known as Send in Blue. It's pretty similar. Um, I've used MailChimp in the past. I feel like it's similar to that, but I don't have a lot of experience with sending um, or growing an email list yet, but that is something that I'm working on. So if you want to check that out, I would recommend Brevo or MailChimp right now. Part of my workflow is creating a weekly newsletter. So uh, if you're interested in learning how that happens and how to make that happen, hit me up. Again, I'm here to help you guys out um, and to make this stuff easier for you. I'm building tools that streamline all this stuff. So, and for a community engagement tool, we're gonna be, uh, yeah, I've got a private community on Facebook that's, you know, I'm inviting people to join. And, and, and if you're not there yet, I really wanna invite you to be there because I wanna build a really supportive community there where people can come in and support one another, share their struggles, and bounce ideas off of one another. I'm there, I'm chatting with people. Um, well, not chatting with people yet, but I'm there putting up posts. I'm there uh, putting in questions to help us ponder things, to help us grow. So if you wanna be a part of a community of like-minded people who are seeking to better themselves, both personally and in the world of podcasting, please come join. There's a link in the, uh, in the show notes. But besides that, you know, I'm planning to re release to all the social media platforms and just trying to create as much traction as I can through posting in all those areas for people to find and pointing that all back towards, um, towards the podcast and the Facebook group so that we can all connect with one another and help each other out. Because that's really what this is about. It's about me document documenting my journey in a way that helps you and helps you avoid certain things that uh, that you don't need to do so that you can learn from what I've done. So if you have any questions today, please email me. I would love to help you get started. The thing to remember here, guys, is that it's done is better than perfect again, and we don't have to break the bank to make this happen. We can do things on a budget and we can just, um, we can get going. Like with the microphone, the headphones, and if you've already got a phone, so if, if you just need those two, that's a hundred bucks to get going. And you just find a quiet room in your house and let everybody else know, you let your housemates or your family know, hey, I'm gonna be recording for the next 30 minutes and just make it happen. It's, it's really that easy. Um, but if you need help finding something specific, hit me up, please hit me up, happy to help you. Um, and again, we're, we're looking for tools that simplify our process. We're not trying to, you know, make things more complicated. So don't don't go buy things just for the sake of buying a shiny new toy. Buy it because it makes your life as a podcaster easy. If you already have a microphone sitting around, don't go buy a new one just because it's new and you think it'll make you sound better. Just figure out how to use that tool. Unless you're at a place where you're ready to upgrade and you've already got some podcast episodes under your belt. So this week, take inventory of the tools you've got figure out what's working, what's not working, figure out what tools may help your uh, workflow better. Um, 
and just make it happen. If you don't have the budget to get the tools that you think you need, look for some some budget-friendly workarounds. And if you want to brainstorm that with me, again, please email me or find me in the Facebook group and let's chat about it. I'd be happy to help you figure out what you need to make your workflow smoother. Because at the end of the day, it's about consistency and it's about showing up every single day. So, all right, guys, thank you. This has been episode six and I'm looking forward to meeting with you guys again next week for episode seven. So until then, happy podcasting. <laughs>